Good Sunday morning. It is the Positively Petland Show right here on 800 KXIC. We are joined in studio by our sales department. Yes. <laughs> who have been playing with the puppies. We are also joined in studio by co-owner Ron Solzerud from Petland of Iowa City Eastside. Iowa City. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. That's it was funny. Right when you were doing the intro, they come in with the puppies. I don't think they know that we have a show. Uh, normally, we have a on-air light that says, hey, we're on the air when I turn the microphones on. But they literally opened the door a half a second before I turned the microphones on. But anyway, <laughs> that's just the way the morning goes. How are you? I am doing really good. That was fun. <laughs> that is fun. It's uh, It just proves that we can just kind of let things fly the way that they... Uh, in a professional way. In a very professional way. Ron Soulsrude from 800 KXIC. <clears throat> that was my professional voice. It works for me. What's the breed of the week this week, Ron? We're going to look at the fluffy little Pomeranian. We're going to stump Jerry on where does the Pomeranian originate from? Iran? No, I didn't mean to like the, the oh, last you do? part. Sorry, you Not didn't... just the last part. That wasn't an emphasis. It was just, there's uh, a clue in that word there somewhere. But anyways, we'll move on. And then we're going to talk about, we're going to switch gears. We're going to go to the uh, cat, the kitten. And we're going, oh, Jerry, you can't go on to Google and do that. You got to come up with, it's only fun when you guess. Ron, they couldn't see me going <laughs> to Google. Okay. You just totally outed me live I on the air. you strong. All right. So then after the Pomeranian and after we sump Jerry and he comes up with this wild guess, we're going to go into the uh, cat and their hairballs. And we're going to talk about hitting it at its root. Why does a cat cough up hairballs? eliminate reduce that and we're going to solve a majority of your problem then we'll go into a couple of things that can help you along the way after that then the treat of the week is the greenies uh little feline treat and we'll uh, my cat loves these things to the point where i can train my cat with them so they're intense oh we got the yeah i forgot we had the dogs, the dogs. back in the yeah all of a sudden i got a little bump on my ankle and i was like whoop what was that? Uh, what do you have crawling around in here now? I've worked in this building over 15 years, and I swear to God, there are still ghosts of uh, old broadcasters that are in this uh, place that salespeople that still cool. kind of wandering around. I'm not uh, ruling out, but the puppies are uh, biting my shoes right now, which is kind of cute. And that is cute. Do we have an amazing we do. story of the week. That's right. We should probably get to that. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out where the Pomeranian is from. I don't. Oh, oh, we've got you a stump. You are just going to throw me under. So rule of thumb, don't stump Jerry. Here, you stump us all week long on your quizzes. We can win this. We can win that. But you know the answer and you know what's going on. You know, I was going to try to stump you. I was going to open up the show. Happy Mother's Day to all of our listeners oh, and mothers. Uh, uh, gosh, I, I was going to open that up uh, with a special sounder and I completely forgot about it. Maybe uh, segment two, I'll be able to do it. We'll bring it in then. Happy Mother's Day to my mother, Jeanette. Uh, and uh, so happy birthday or happy uh, Mother's Day. And maybe it's uh, your birthday also. But uh, let's get into the amazing pet story of the week. Are you ready? It's time for the amazing pet story of the week. This one comes to us. Uh, way to be queued up on that. Oh my God. A German spitz named Roman, Rowan, excuse me, was born without eyes. So oh. this is a German spitz named Rowan, and he was born without eyes. But he gets around oh. almost as, yes, Ron? No, I'm just, that's, you have amazing stories, and that is already amazing. So he gets around almost as well as a sighted dog. Rowan learned to use the reverberations of his bark to determine where objects are in the great outdoors. This is a version called echolocation, mm -hmm. which is a blind person, or a dog in this case, <clears throat> creates a mental map by comparing the way that sound bounces back in an echo. Rowan was uh, taught, not taught to see this way, quote unquote, uh, but his owners noticed that his behavior outside changed when the trees filled with leaves. Most people who meet Rowan don't even realize that he's blind. They just wonder why he keeps his eyes 
shut. So uh, oh. born with a disability and even dogs can use echolocation in order to uh, get around. I thought that it had the location of where Rowan is located, but uh, obviously not. So that is your amazing pet story of the week. Boy, we're running uh, on all cylinders this morning. Our A-plus game uh, this morning. What happened, Ron? I don't like it when you grab a piece of paper and put it down on the floor. What happened? Nothing. This is my studio, and you bring dogs in, and they have accidents. <laughs> I'm going to start lining the whole entire thing with newspapers, but that's the way that it goes. It is the Positively Petland show, so once again, just tell us really quick about the uh, uh, breed of the week. It, it is the Pomeranian, the fluffy little Pomeranian. Uh, then we're going to go into, you know, is this the right breed for your family? Then we're going to get into the uh, hairballs for cats and how to significantly reduce those and then a little bit into litter box design there's the engineering in me is going to come out and we're going to talk about why are so many litter boxes designed the way they are today it just doesn't even make sense anymore so we'll talk about the litter box design and, and present the best solution all right here, it's the Positively Petland Show every Sunday morning on 800 KXIC at 9 o'clock. Quick break, and then we're going to come back with the breed of the week, and I'm going to do a little bit of research and uh, figure out where these things are from. It is the Positively Petland Show. Good morning. <laughs> Kicks, I see. Here we go. <laughs> Are you ready to go, Ron? Did you do your Mother's Day theme? Oh, gosh. No, I didn't, but uh, I will give a shout out anyway to all of the great mothers. I didn't have a I didn't have a theme. I just wanted to do this little uh, uh, tribute to mothers, and I forgot to uh, I forgot to do it. It's okay. Happy Mother's Day to all of the great mothers out there, including my mom, Jeanette. Hi, mom. Uh, happy Mother's Day, and uh, you can celebrate it by heading over to the amazing Petland on the east side of Iowa City. Oh yeah, have a good playtime. We this week alone had birthdays, birthday dads coming in with their kids. And I was like, this is impressive. He goes, yeah. He goes, I just want this day to be fun. And that's what we're doing. So very all cool. The, all the fun. Have fun at, on your Mother's Day. All the fun 
and more. It is the Petland Show right here, yes. Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock on 800 KXIC, where we talk about litter boxes. <laughs> we'll actually make that one fun from an engineering perspective. Oh, yeah, that's really fun. Because the design of litter boxes is important. Yes. But first, we must get to these beautiful little puppies that are tearing up the studio. The Palmeranian is the breed of the week. Is that correct? Yes. So, we have you... You've had time, and you're you every now and then look over at the book. You're like, uh, maybe I could read it in there really quick. I'm gonna say per Persia, uh, Ethiopia, uh, uh, Chile. All right, this country no longer exists. Yugoslavia. So you could actually, oh, you're getting closer. Ukraine. It. Uh, Turkmenistan. <laughs> it was Pomeranian. Pomerania. Oh, I don't know where that is. And so that it is. Should I know where that is? Germany and Poland. Okay. Uh, was the area that it originates from. So you could have said Germany or Poland as well. And you would have been ding, 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 ding on all this stuff. So let's learn a little bit about let's the history of the Pomeranian. So uh, in the Baltic region, there once existed a province called Pomerania that was bordered by Germany on one side, and by what is now Poland on the other. Although Spitz-type dogs were prevalent throughout the northern countryside of the territory, a specific, smaller, perky dog of this type was being called the Pomeranian. Perky. That is that is a great adjective for watching these dogs uh, play in the yes, studio. Yes, and that definitely is a prominent uh, personality. If you're looking for a perky yet small dog, you're you're heading in the right direction here. Uh, in the early days, Pomeranians were often seen riding alongside their masters on the boats of the local traders. So that's kind of a cool history. They could see them on the boats as they're going up and down the rivers. They served as guard dogs on the boats huh? and companions to the crews. Now we're going to find out there's a surprising turn of events for Pomeranians on what they look like today and what they looked like back then. Back at their homesteads, they were used as herders, cart pullers. Wow. You, I mean, these, what we have in the studio is all of two pounds. That's a puppy and they're going to get all of seven, eight pounds as an adult. I'm not sure that it could pull a uh, cart radio flyer wagon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And protectors of their family. So that's what these guys used to do. Um, then uh, in uh, in the 1700s, Queen Charlotte acquired a dog of 20 plus pounds from the province of Pomerania, which was the first official entry of that type of dog into Great Britain. So the background uh, is, is that these guys used to be a lot more uh, weighty. So just a hundred years ago, uh, they were in that 30, uh, possibly even 40 pounds. So they were a much bigger dog back then. That's that Spitz heritage and all that. But over the last hundred years, there obviously has been a concentrated effort on getting them smaller and smaller and smaller. So they must have mixed it with a smaller breed in and out over those years to get them down to the size. Because that's not something, you know, you, and you hear the runt of the litter. That's not how you would bring a, um, the size down in a in a breed. You would mix in a small breed to get them smaller. And this is one of those breeds that is dramatic from what it originally started out to what it is today. And it's obviously bred that way. But it's always interesting every week hearing about the breed of the week on how you do kind of mix and put things together to come up with what type of dog you want. Right. And and. For those true purebred people out there, I, I think this is where you, you kind of expand your horizon a little bit and go, oh, well, gosh, that's right. Purebreds were mixes from the past. And then to hear about why and how and all that kind of stuff is fascinating. I would say they were a little more purposeful in breeding back then. Now it's because eh, I thought it was cute. Yeah, right. Yeah, kind of thing. So I would take that on. Um, but uh, so yeah, so the Pomeranian's got a very interesting history to it. Now getting into more of the form and function of this little one. By the way, we're, we're uh, taking this all from the AKC, the new complete dog book 
21st edition, which I believe is still current. And AKC, AKC stands for American Kennel Club. Yes, which is a grouping of clubs of which, uh, here, the official name for the Pomeranian Club, American Pomeranian Club, which was founded in 1900. <laughs> The official name of the American Pomeranian Oh, it, it makes sense. Come on. <laughs> is the American... You just blew my mind, Ron. I, <laughs> the boom. APC under the AKC's umbrella. Okay? All right. I'm just trying to be official. All right. So the form and function. Climate and outdoor work in their location of origin made it essential that these little dogs have harsh water and snow-resistant coats. So that's why they have such fluffy coats. Uh, double coats provided warmth while working outside during those long winter months. Prick ears, enhancing hearing, and medium-sized dark eyes improved vision in the reflective glare of a snowy region. I have not heard any reference to eyes like that before, and uh, I can only assume that that is correct, that, that a dark eye is something, like if... Do the Eskimos have darker eyes, or have they been in the uh, Alaska region, that colder climate, for not a long time, not a long enough time? Or whatever? Uh, that's that's an interesting. In that is an interesting. Uh, like to learn more on that one. Their alert temperaments and sharp voices suited them for their work as guard dogs and herders. This is when they were much bigger, and I bet you that bark was a lot more than it is on these little things. Now it's more of a. Yip, yip, yip. Which is trainable, by the way. So if if you're like going, wait, I don't want a yippy dog. All dogs are yippy dogs, big dogs, little dogs. That's a trainable thing. Uh, that's you can train them too, which a lot of people uh, do sometimes, not intentionally, but they do. Um, and then uh, some, like I, I myself, I like it when my dogs are quiet, unless we're playing. If we're playing, let it out, loud and proud, having fun, you know, kind of a thing. So going on, ideal type. Ideal type for this compact, short, short-backed, sturdy breed has evolved over the years. Their signature trait is the heavy standoff double coat, which comes in a variety of colors. The shift in popularity of specific colors has been dramatic, and that's uh, that's something I'll have a comment here. The original colors is are coming out here. It wasn't until 1914 that the first orange and orange sable palms came into favor in the 21st century, orange and sable palms comprise the largest number of show entries. So they, I believe, still dominate the Pomeranian uh, population today, the orange and then the sable. And that's actually what we have in here. We have an orange and you have the sable in your arms right now. Um, the orange is pretty much that. It would be like a very light orange color. The sable picture, you know, the orange, light orange, but have some black highlights in them, kind of like a fox a little bit, Wait, maybe a little darker than a fox even. Uh, so those are the colors. Now what's cool with Pomeranians, and it probably came out by the mixing and downsizing of these little ones, um, they now have party palms. And that's just fun. And party palms would be those with multicolors. So they would be a white base with black or brown or whatever colors uh, mixed in. And those are beautiful. And we have one of those in our store as well. So we have three Pomeranians as of Thursday this week. So I'm, uh, you might be able to, you should be able to see some Pomeranians in our store even here today, Sunday. All right, so living with this palm in trying to decide whether this breed is right for your situation, there are certain things in, to keep in mind. Although bred for a variety of purposes centuries ago, the Pomeranian today is a companion dog. And that's really all it can be. It's it, so small. They are lovers. I picked one up and it was just, it kind of burrowed right underneath my chin. Yeah. I was like, ah, it's, this is nice. You. This is perfect. Palms thrive on attention and love getting involved in your life in your cat's life, or in your dog, other dog's life, uh, in the next yard even. Uh, they love the companionship of other Pomeranians within the same household. So this is a very companion-y in their, what they're trying to say with cats, with other dogs, with your neighbor's dogs, and all sorts of things. So it's a very lovable little dog. Uh, since these dogs are so small, their exercise needs are easily satisfied, dashing around the apartment a moderate uh, a moderate afternoon walk or 
laps around the fenced perimeter of the yard provides adequate exercise for these little darlings. So these are small dogs, and that's one of the biggest things personally I like about small dogs is that, hey, the exercise is all done within your house if need be. Now, they these guys would love to go for a walk with you. Uh, they're not going to be that running dog. You're not going to be able to go for a jog and have them keep up with you, uh, that kind. Uh, but they'll have all the exercise they need back in the house. That is one thing I like about them is uh, <laughs> just watching them play in studio. Uh, they'll like kind of sit there all steady. They'll just be staring at you and then they'll lunge like two feet forward <laughs> and be like, hey, <laughs> let's, let's go, let's play. Let's play right now. There's a, uh, a Bugs Bunny character. What is that that does that? that hops like that. You think on that moment and I will continue. Since these dogs are so small. Are you thinking of Tigger? Oh, maybe I am. Winnie the Pooh. Yes, yes, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, my, he, my bounce, he bounces around on his tail and yes. kind of acts like that. Since yes. these dogs are so I small. I can't tell you what uh, where the breed of the week is from, but I know my Looney Tune and uh, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh uh, cartoons. Well, that's all right, because I was just... <laughs> Reading the same thing I already did. Finally, owners interested in the Pomeranian must be willing and committed to the maintenance and basic care of the breeds, noticeably that glorious coat. So what I had to do this morning when I, you know, was getting it's bouncing the camera these guys <laughs> ready, um, was I did have to give them a brush out and all that kind of a thing because uh, they did get a little bit of something in their hair and all that kind of stuff. So there's combing and brushing, uh, bathing and all that kind of a thing. Uh, for the little Pomeranians. They're small, though. I guess I look at that and go, okay, a little bit of maintenance. You know, oh, it, it, it larger wouldn't... dog's going to have a much bigger issue <laughs> than these little guys. It wouldn't take you more than probably, what, maybe two minutes at the most to be able to comb to this. To fully, oh, to comb, let alone fully bathe. Yeah, yeah. The, the it, dog. It, even just holding it in my hands right now, I was just rubbing my fingers through the back of its hair, and it's like, okay, well, this thing's pretty, you know, get all the little crusties out and the yeah. things that it picks up on the uh, on the ground and whatnot. It is a shedding dog, but it is a tiny shedding dog. Um, it is very cute uh, with its poofed out, you know, fur, and, and that is the undercoat, which is supporting everything underneath there uh, and pushing it all out straight out like it is um, they'll go through times when they'll have a oh uh, they'll blow their coat and i call it the teenage years and it's around eight months to 12 months where they'll all of a sudden the, you know they'll lose their little bit of you know hair that they have because they're such small bodies they are going to knock over that camera. yeah we have a uh, we're, we're live on youtube right now and uh the camera's going all over the place because they're at the base of it, knocking it around. But um, but th that will get lost, and then all of a sudden, the hair lies down flat. And then it, people get concerned. Oh, I really like that one was poofed out. Don't you worry, because in another six months, it'll build back out beyond your expectations. Really? Yeah, it's really pretty when that second coat really develops out. So it is a fun, small, uh, beautiful, a uh, little uh, breed, Pomeranian. Is that the right breed for you? From Pomerania, which is Poland and uh, Germany. Yes. I will remember that for next time. This is the second time I think that we've had the uh, Pomeranians in. And sometimes I, uh, my, my retention of, of interesting facts uh, just isn't always right there. What are you looking for? A pen. Oh, you, I got one. You took my pen. Uh, well, you had said when and all that, and I always like to record when we when we do these things so that we know there it is don't want to be repeating ourselves may 14th 2017 may what 14 oh that's true okay i got a little we're recording this and i got a little confused there sorry all right moving on it's it's smoke and mirrors ron <laughs> it's, it's breaking that fourth wall we're actually here on sunday even though it's thursday <laughs> You wrote down May 11th, and I was like, I know, and today is not May 11th. Today is Mother's Day, May 14th. So now, moving on from the Pomeranian to cat hairballs. So your limited knowledge and understanding of a cat, where, where do you think the hairball comes from? Uh, the gut. Uh, underneath the couch? Oh, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you... I love the responses I get because I think in one direction pretty strongly. And just seeing seeing the look on your face going, Jerry, you just you have no idea what you're talking what you're talking about. <laughs> no, but that I a lot of people are are probably thinking the same thing. 
is it accumulation of hair around my house? Well, that was an interesting que question. Where does the hairball come from? Well, obviously, hair of the cat. Is that what I'm thinking? Oh, well, that's interesting. No, the, yes, that's exactly where it comes from. But I, oh, I thought the audience might think the other, so I wanted to address that. But, okay, we're going to drop that because that was Jerry's I'm, response. I am abstract thinking sometimes. So you, where is the ha hairball? It comes from the cat itself. And okay. it's all the grooming and everything. And sh cats. They like licking and grooming each other that yeah, way. That is what they do. And so they do it all the time. Limited knowledge. A limited knowledge. <laughs> Jerry's limited. I resent. Did I say that? Yes, you go with your limited knowledge and experience <laughs> with cats, and I'm like sitting here. Oh, going, with cats. With cats. Okay, yes. I had a caveat to that. Yeah, but I knew that they groom each other by licking, and that's probably how they gather all of right. the hair. And they're constantly, there. whether you're seeing them do it or not, they're doing that, and they're doing it all the time. So, and what's coming off is cats are double coated as well, and what the oils of their skin retains that inner coat to their body and so it's not like it just comes off in chunks usually uh, but do some cats do shed dramatically but so they're always licking their coats and they're getting that under layer out but they shed at a much ra more rapid rate than they could ever uh, groom themselves uh, out of and by the way they can't get to all parts of their bodies so we could help them with that and what tool do you think would help in this debacle of situations where we're trying to remove loose hair from a cat's body in large quantities. Is it the Furminator? It would be ding, 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 ding. The first step to helping your cat with hairballs is not necessarily going after the, you know, the hairball formula and the hairball uh, ointments and stuff like that. While they are, that's a great supplement, but that would be like the fourth and fifth step in the process. Um, and you probably won't even solve the problem all that well with these products. How you're going to go at it is at the source, the root of the problem. And that is are we boring you right now? No, Jerry? not at all. Okay. I had something in my eye. I think, okay. I, got, I think I got a cat hair in my eye. Oh, a Pomeranian hair. Possibly. So using the Furminator to remove that loose hair from your cat will help dramatically. Gilbert, our cat at home, we here is now, I think, 15 years old. Wow. It's getting up there in years. When we go to the veterinarian, he, he just says holy cow this cat is beautiful and normally they kind of get a little ratty at this point i think there's two reasons why gilbert looks so beautiful handsome at this age and that one is is the food that we feed is high in omega-3s fatty acids a premium food but then the second thing is that ferminator we use the ferminator i will say i'm not a, if you are the one that can do this every week you're going to see exceptionally great results i'm more the one that says wait a month or two, and then do it like three times in a row, get it down to that level, and then kind of let it go back up. Let it go back up. That's my mode uh, of how I do this. So fermenting, and the first time, like if you waited a couple of months, you're going to ferminate for about 30 minutes. My cat really enjoys this. I actually bring him outside. He is an indoor only cat. He does not go outside at all. So I'm carrying him out there. He kind of gets a kick out of, he's not into the outdoors all that much, but he gets a kick because I'm holding him and I put him down <clears throat> on a flat surface, like a patio. And I just start, you know, raking the, the Furminator through his coat and he just plops to the floor and just says, Bring it on. I love this. I'm scratching them in, in, a, in a sense at this point. Have you ever seen the movie Shrek? Yes. Have you ever seen the movie Shrek 2? I with, think so. With Puss in Boots, the cat yes. that yes. comes out. And my yes. favorite part of the whole entire movie is when he starts coughing up the hairball. <laughs> Do you remember that part? I think so, yeah. And it's the most yeah. drawn out dramatic. Because that's what cats do, I though. Know. And it was the greatest part of the movie. And, and I just remember the first time I saw it laughing my rear off at yeah. It, and if you haven't seen this movie, it's uh, the, the character's name of this cat is Shrek's friend Puss in Boots. And uh, he's this kind of... Uh, What's the actor's name that uh, does the voice? Spanish. I can't think of it right off the top of my head, but... Uh, ben. Ben Dare. Not uh, Ben. Uh, I, I don't remember the name of the, the, the voice. But it's the most dramatic. Oh, it is. Yes, out, I remember this. Oh, and... Total 
on spot on representation of this cat coughing up a hairball. <laughs> it's like 30 seconds of the cat going, rah, rah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gilbert you like you you go i feel so bad for you but don't do it there <laughs> it's the wheezing sound that just kind of you make you go oh you're really pulling deep on that one so that that's what i was thinking about when you were talking about grooming and whatnot is that is that is the best representation from the uh, oh, yes, i would agree with you totally so i do this for about 30 minutes now at this point why did i do it outside because holy cow, are you going to get hair out? And I do it outside, so I don't have that hair inside. I'm also hairy at this point with the cat hair. Gotcha. Uh, and so I have already set it up where I've got towels and all that kind of stuff set up in the in the house. And we're going to go to my next biggest secret on how to prevent hairballs, and that is is bathe your cat. I told you on the front end, those oils are holding in that hair to the body. We need to help the cat release it and get remove some of those oils. So what you're going to do, and, and there's like half your audience of cat customers right now, our owners are saying, I cannot wash my cat. Have you tried bringing them into the shower? I just was talking with somebody even today that said that made all the difference. Why would you wash a cat any other way was their response. Mm. And I go, you get it. Bring the cat into the shower and it's so much less traumatic on the cat and so much less traumatic on you yourself. So when you're in there, you're just, you know, angle in the shower head. And if you got one of those detachable ones, boy, you just go crazy. That's the, that's the way I used to wash my Dane. I used to put on my swim trunks, just hop right into the shower with her. And it was so much easier rather than trying to force her and she yeah. was just sprawled out with her yeah. legs like this going i do not want to do this I hate a lot of once i got into the shower with her she just calmed down and we just uh, right would kind of avoid the water spray and stuff but i would i you can't help it you just you know yep. keep it angled towards them so i bathe the cat i soap up and rinse three times um i'm getting a good wash and um, I am shocked on how much hair is coming out off my cat. Even at this point, I just fermented for 30 minutes. Now I'm bathing and I'm releasing a whole nother group of hair. So now I'm going to get a lot more hair. So I'm bathing and rinsing here three times because the hair just keeps on coming off. Uh, what kind of cat is Gilbert? He's just a domestic long hair. Okay. He's not the really long hair. I would say he's the mid hair length. He's not the short you know, kind of thing. Um, so uh, bathe three times so now you've you're done with the first treatment you have done mountains of good already for your cat on decreasing the amount of hairballs that that one's going to have i then one week later uh, or sooner go back at i do that whole rotation again and i'm always amazed on how much comes off if i do it three times so now i've done it another week but now i'm good for like three months, you know, kind of a thing. Or if you maintain it and just do it once a week, then it's a lot easier uh, all around as well. But on that third time, after I get done fermenting outside again, washing uh, and all that kind of stuff, I have noticed that when you scratch, have you ever scratched a cat for a period of time for like, let's say a minute? Mm, probably at some point over there. And like when you're doing it, especially, I'll, you could do it anywhere, but I always am around the neck for Gilbert. I'm just like, Oh, he's just digging it. You know, you're scratching around the neck and then you're like, go, <laughs> I got hair all over my fingers. And then you go, uh, it, well, for you, it's like, sorry, whoever's house you're visiting right now. Uh, there's hair all over the cat. That's now going to be all over your house. You know, kind of a thing. Uh, when you do that after even the first one, you're going to notice a dramatic decrease after the third one. I don't even see the hair anymore. I, I can scratch Gilbert and I don't have loose hair anymore. Key, if you have allergy issues in your house from the human side of things to the cat, uh, you do this kind of a thing and you're going to significantly decrease. We're, uh, our daughter is going to be coming home from college here any day. Uh, and the, uh, one of the things that we have to do is, is get the fermenting going, the washing going so that when she comes home, uh, she she has minor allergies, but she won't have any when we. And congratulations that. to her for graduating. Yeah, yeah, and got one out. And congratulations to all of our 2017 graduates, high school and 
uh, university, just an exciting time. Yes. And everybody in Iowa City is excited now, Sunday, because <laughs> everything has exited. <laughs> We're assuming that everybody's made it through okay, but it is that time of year where everybody just kind of comes in. It's like uh, I, I uh, described it last week on air as four straight days of nonstop Hawkeye football games. With all of the traffic, yes. it's oh. 70,000 people coming in oh, over right. the course of four days, and they just stay here, and they linger, and they walk oh, around. our store here, we're Sunday, but this whole week, oh, our counselors are they're pulling their hair out because it's just the high traffic is insane, and it's fun. We, we just have to control it a little differently, kind of like you have to control traffic a little differently when there's so much... Well, and you talked about it last week also about the great uh, uh, de-stressing event that you did for the university. And that, the, the faculty and staff really appreciated oh, it Oh, and they're well. still coming into the store now and saying, that was such a great event. I appreciate it. So it was nice to do that and have that event. Um, so so the all of the uh, – oh, I'm trying to remember how we got on to all this. Uh, but graduation, we talked Emily, about Emily, uh, what's your daughter's name? Oh, Emily's coming back Emily home. Emily's coming yeah. back home. Uh, yeah, and so – I hijacked it. I apologize. There. Back wrapping up. The money up, trail uh, came back. Uh, and so that's that's the first and second step. Uh, secrets that people don't realize is going to help your cat with the hairball issues. And if you, maybe you're uh, somebody that, you know, I, I, I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too whatever, and they can't do that. Get somebody's help to do this kind of stuff because it's not that hard to do. Um, that neighbor uh, kid, you know, that is looking for something to do now that it's coming into summer. I'm bored. <laughs> hey, go ferminate the cat, you know, kind of a thing. Um, I, I, you know, there's pleasure in getting all that hair out. And I would think some child would enjoy that as well, just because you would appreciate it so much and, the, and they would see that. So, so employ some help. How much time do we have left on our show? About here today? five, six minutes. Okay. So, uh, the other treatments that are out there, and, and we all know about them. You can get the food that has the hairball treatment already added in it. Uh, more and more foods are now coming out with that. So if you're you know, using a brand and you're stuck with that brand, uh, check the shelves now to see that if there's a hairball uh, additive that they're doing. Um, you can always, though, stick with what you have. And there's all of those uh, products that are out there that they just try to gum up the hair in the cat and, and then get it to pass through. So you have a normal digestion, uh, pull it through the cat kind of a thing is the purpose of those. Um, also, omega-3s and fatty acids are, are also known to improve uh, skin and coat. Uh, it helps us even. Uh, if you're not doing uh, omega-3s and fatty acids and you get itchy skin from time to time, whether it's allergies in the summer or dry skin in the winter, get on omega-3s and fatty acids and you're going to actually find that will help your skin and coat, uh, but it helps the cats and the dogs because it decreases the amount of shedding. They've done studies scientifically, seen have seen, proven that that, that reduces the amount of shed because it's healthier. So those are some tips, other tips that you can do. Move into the litter box. All right, Jerry, I, you you know my my litter box craziness, right? You I know do. my passion on litter boxes. I do. I've got an unusual passion just because whenever I can do less maintenance with my cat, I'm all about it. And when I came across what is a top entry, and there is only one good top entry cat box out there now, uh, there are others that are coming out and I've looked at them and I said, they're foo-foo. They're they're not made well, all sorts of things. They, they're gimmicky, you know, kind of thing. You need the br brute force uh, one that that started the whole process, but let's think here. Okay, litter boxes. So this cat, you know, kind of goes in uh, to this litter box. We know that the cat's going to get stuff in the paws. It's just the nature of the product. You know, they haven't designed this air blast that's going to take away things and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so the cat goes in there and then uh, comes out of the litter box, and right in front of the litter box starts wiping the paws. Well. Wait, tracking is already occurring. If we can get the cat to do that, either back in the box or somehow get that litter to stay in the box, wouldn't that be genius? The top entry box does exactly that. When you, when the cat goes in there, it does the normal thing. It's in the litter and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes out the top, it's still not outside the box. It's just on top of the box. And everybody that uses this box will see it. The cat starts doing the whole 
mm. wiping their paws on top of the box. And they'll even, you'll watch them, they'll actually guide it to the hole and push it into the hole uh, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just a neat little thing that cats do. You will significantly reduce the tracking of that cat. I'm not saying it's going to eliminate it. You're going to get a little bit, but nothing compared to what you've got now. If you have just the open box or the side entry box, uh, those, it just is by design. It's going to track all over the place. This one by design will reduce it significantly. My analogy is, as I was sweeping every three days, now I sweep maybe once a month. That's the significance in the less tracking and everything mm -hmm. like that. And those benefits pay off immensely. Cleaning time, just... Uh, it's free. <laughs> the box itself is the same price as all the other ones. And so it's just like, well, I'm going to buy one or I need a new one. Just switch over to this thing. Don't worry about whether your cat's too fat. It's not going to fit in the hole. We've got 25, 30-pound cats fitting through the hole right now. No problem. We've got, uh, oh, my cat's old. No, cats figure it out, you know, kind of a thing. I, we don't get these things back, and we've sold thousands of them. Why don't you see them all over the place? Because they're ugly. They are the world's <laughs> ugliest cat box ever, litter box. Um, but they do what they do really, really well. Function over design. Oh, my goodness. Function is massive on these things. I wish they, you know, would make a different color or something. But I think the manufacturer, I don't think many people in general buy them because when you look at them on the shelf, you'll go, my cat won't do that, or I don't understand the benefits or anything. Why would I buy an ugly cat box, litter box? So and where is the cat box usually? It's hidden It's somewhere. hidden downstairs yeah. or in a mud room or it, it's not supposed it's to underneath. be. Underneath. Yeah. It's not supposed to be glamorous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't get those litter boxes that are in the living rooms in the hutch that looks like an end table. <laughs> I don't want it in the living room. Right, right, you know, right, right, right. So, so this litter box is really good. I think we ran out of a little bit of time on the the litter that I use is phenomenal. Uh, I'll just say it's power mix. Well, I talk about it quite a bit, so we'll talk about that on another show. If you if you're looking for a new litter, this also reduces maintenance for your cat, and we'll talk about why. But it by hands, I've tried all the litters that are out there. This one smacks the odors like none other. Uh, you don't even notice that it's in the room, kind of a thing. It is the uh, Positively Pet Land Show. Just uh, about two minutes to wrap up. So Here, let's just talk about Greenies real quick. Yep. Uh, Greenies has uh, two kinds. They've got the original dental treats for cats, but then they also have, and if you haven't tried these, so they it's the dental bites, but now they have little gels and stuff in it. So we talked about hairballs. Well, they have one designed for hairballs where the Greenie has it in the inside. Uh, they also have for skinning, uh, skin and fur, so it's going to have the omega-3s and fatty acids. My cat loves both of these greenies so much that I can work on training with my cat. I think that's just fun. Cats can be trained, by the way. And we've talked the last couple of weeks about purposeful treats. So, yes. it, so if it has these things already in it, it's not just it's not just a treat for a treat, but it is actually helping the cat as well. Right. And if you're working on them and training, then let's do it. So if your cat's doing something you like, whether it's meowing or not meowing, give it a treat when it's doing what you want it to do over and over again and it's going to realize there's a pattern going there so use these feline greenies smart bites and then the original dental uh for those purposes or if you just want to make your cat happy get these treats because they are phenomenal in the attractiveness to your cat your cat's gonna when you put them down your, your cat's gonna go oh thank you thank you thank you oh thank you thank you thank you that's what that's what cats do palmerinian breed of the week from perania <laughs> Pomerania. Pomerania. What did I say? I'm sorry. Pomerania. I, I think of, that's. Persia I was thinking of. I was thinking Ania. of uh, uh, Persian cats. That's what. That's, that's where my mind oh, was going. Okay. So yeah. I mixed the two segments oh, of the we show get it together. Now. Just all mushed Jerry's up in my confusing head. Confusing mind. Pomerania. Yes. Pomeranian cat. A uh, dog. Jeez, Lord. <laughs> You're saying a lot of uh, good uses of God's name today. It is church day. <laughs> so I appreciate that. I apologize. <laughs> You're doing fine. Uh, plenty to think about. So tell us about the store and uh, what you have going on this week. We're a pet land of Iowa City located in the Sycamore Mall, now known as Marketplace Mall, now also across the parking lot from Lucky's Market. So that's our location. Uh, our hours of operation today, noon until six. So 
noon until 6 p.m. today, Sunday. All other days, it's uh, open at 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. Uh, but again, today, noon until 6. So cruise on over to Petland. Uh, have some fun. Learn about pets. That's what we're all about. You'll notice that uh, our... What a dra- What a- What a- wanting to work with you and say, hey, this is what the book says about this one. We want to make sure you're getting the right pet for your situation. Uh, we also have the $5 nail trims. You can't beat a $5 nail trim. Just bring your vaccination schedule in uh, and then we'll have it done. No appointments necessary. And then finally, all of our cat, dog food, and a lot of other foods are on a buy 10, get one free. Uh, and so we track it for you. It's easy. Just get it from us and uh, on that 11th bag, it's a party in line when you get that free one. I think balloons are starting to come down out of the ceiling every time <laughs> that happens. Too confetti sometimes falls out and everything. It's really cool. So it's it's a benefit that you get. You get the products at a low price. Uh, and then on top of that, it's like getting 10% off even off of that with a buy 10, get one free. That's what uh, that's what I always did when I had my Dane, and it, it is it does feel good when you don't realize that you're at at that uh, that free bag, and then all of a sudden they they look at you and go, "Thank you, sir. Have a great day." And you're like, "Oh wow, total score. That's awesome." Yeah. So that's a uh, that's like always. It. Sometimes they tell us what they're going to do with the money, and it's just funny that that you share that. You know, oh of, the customer. Yeah. Oh, we're going to go out to dinner tonight. Right. You know, kind of a thing or whatever, and it's just fun so stop in we'll get it right this time the pomeranian dog breed of the week uh at the store so did i do it right yes you got it right i thought you were going to go on and i'm like you just no 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 there was a period there okay. no semicolon or dash or anything period. like that yeah find the period yes right? come in and see these pomeranians they are a blast uh fun little energy nuggets uh and and uh, take one home they're they're really good pets all right so thank you ron Solsrud from petland of iowa city it is the positively petland show every sunday morning happy mother's day once again have a great sunday happy mother's day